What's up nerds, and this is Big Nerds War Gaming. My name is Sam, and on this episode of The Painting Desk, I'm going to show you how I painted the Apothecary Biologus from the Warhammer 40k Leviathan Starter Box. Now white power armor can be very tricky to pull off because many people fall into the trap of trying to paint pure white right away. When a better approach is to aim for an overall shade of light gray. Doing so, you can reserve the pure white color for edge highlights. When it is all complete, it will read to the eye as the color white, even though it's actually more of a gray color. I have a recipe for painting white power armor, and to start off, make sure the miniature is primed in a light color. You can use something like gray sear, or another light gray or even white primer color. With a primed model, I start by laying the base shade to the power armor using a mixture of four parts contrast medium to one part apothecary white. If you are starting with a pure white primer spray, I would use a stronger mixture of apothecary white to bring the overall shade down to a cool gray. With this mixture, I go around the entire model with a large brush and let it dry. This model is quite hard to reach all the inside pieces, so I'd recommend not gluing it together until it's fully painted. Since this particular model is a press fit, sliding the pieces on and off should be pretty easy to manage. With the Apothecary White dried, we will start to see some subtle shading on the power armor and some more definition. The next thing I like to do after I have the base coat on the power armor is to paint the Marine's body glove before continuing on with the armor, as it's easy to work from the inside out when painting a model. For this I will use a thinned down application of Corvus Black. White armor is a little tricky because any mistakes will show up very easily, so I'll try to be as careful as possible, and if I do make a mistake, I will touch it up off camera before the next step. After the body glove is painted, I like to do panel lining for the power armor with Nuln Oil. Now if you're painting white armor, this step may not be necessary for something like an Eldar Guardian or other lightly armored models, as the shading from the Apothecary White may be fine for the look you are going for. For marine power armor, however, I prefer a stark panel lines, so I will carefully go over all the panels of the armor with a fine brush, applying Nuln Oil in the recesses. With the Nuln Oil recesses dried, you can see the power armor is already starting to look well defined with a good amount of contrast. But now I'm going to start building it up by taking a lighter gray, color like Althwan gray, and a dry brush and begin carefully moving around all the armor panels to lighten up the more raised areas. I ended up going over the whole model two times with this dry brush to gradually build up the gray. With the gray dry brush complete you can see that it's starting to look more and more white. And now I'm going to push it even further by doing a more focused dry brush using Corax white and really focus on the edges to lighten up the raised areas even more. And for this last step of armor, I take white scar and a fine tip brush and carefully apply an edge highlight all around the model anywhere where there is a sharp corner or panel section in this armor. With the white scar edge highlight, the power armor is complete, and you can see that it looks like white to the eye even though it's actually more of a gray color. If you are looking for a white armor recipe, this is it, and you can stop watching this video. However, I hope you stick around to see how I paint the rest of the details on the Apothecary Biologus Marine. It's time to add some color, and for this I'm going to use Mephiston Red and carefully paint his robes attached to the front belt, as well as the Apothecary Medicaid symbols on his leg and helmet. For the metallic details, I use Lead Belcher and apply it to the canister he is carrying, the thick tubes attached to this power armor, and the bolt pistol, the exhaust vents in the back plate in the power pack, as well as the medical apparatus attached to the power pack. After the lead belcher has dried, I will add some shading to the front apron using Caraborn Crimson and shade all over the apron, letting it pool in the recesses in the folds of the cloth. Then after the red shade has dried, it's time to do a similar treatment to all the metallic parts that were painted earlier using Nuln Oil. One rule I usually abide by is to never leave a metallic paint unshaded. 
The next step to the front apron is to build up some highlights, which I do with some thinned down Evil Sun Scarlet and carefully apply it to the raised most areas of the fabric and tool pouches. I make a mistake and get some red on the stomach area of the marine, which I quickly douse in water with my brush and clear away most of the unwanted paint. Then I bring in white scar from my palette and carefully touch up the spots that could not be cleaned away. For all the other hoses and ribbed hoses attached to the armor and medical apparatus, I like to paint these with black Templar contrast paint, as it looks great over a highly textured surface like these ribbed hoses. After that is all dry, I pick out some details on the canister and surgeon tools with Corvus Black just to add a little variation in color. For the chest plate, the shoulder, and other skull details, I use the metallic color Brass Scorpion and carefully go around and pick out those details. After that dries, I take a mixture of one part Brass Scorpion and one part Liberator Gold and go around those areas again, but only focus on the ridged and raised areas for a highlight effect. Lastly, I apply a wash of Seraphim Sepia over the brass parts to blend the two colors together and to add some more shading in the recessed details. Next, I take Abaddon Black and paint the casing on the heavy bolt pistol, and then the Medicaid emblem red to match the other parts of the armor. For the bolt pistol holster, I use a dark brown color. In this case, I use Rhinox Hide. Then I highlight the edges of this with Steel Legion Drab after everything is dried. Lastly, I take Nuln Oil and darken the pattern printed into the leather on the holster. Now for some fun details. I'm going to be doing some wet blending in the windows on the canister, and to do this, I'm going to be using some various shades of blue going from darker to lighter, beginning with Thousand Suns Blue, moving up to Sotek Green, then Temple Guard Blue, followed by a 50-50 mixture of Temple Guard Blue and White Scar. To do this, I have all the colors on my wet palette, and I paint the details on the window starting with the darkest blue, and then working my way up to the lightest. After painting one color, I immediately move on to the next color without cleaning my brush to ensure the mixture stays wet while I'm working with the colors in the window of the canister. And by doing this, I'm able to blend the gradient more smoothly from light to dark. I don't do this technique very often, but it's not as hard to pull off as one would think. If you haven't tried wet blending before, this is the perfect model to dip your toes and try out this technique. For the canisters on his belt, I'm going to do the same thing, but with a green color. So starting from the darkest color, Warboss Green, then Warpstone Glow, then finally Scarsnick Green as the lightest color. While I have the Warpstone Green out, I decide to use this color on the eye lens. I also use the light blue mixture for the lenses on his medical apparatus, as well as the red color on my palette for the other lenses on his helmet and power pack. For the purity seal, I use Ushati Bone for the parchment and then Mephiston Red for the wax seal. I then wash the parchment with Seraphim Sepia, and the wax seal I wash in Nuln Oil. Other details like the medical scanner on his arm, I paint the screen with Warpstone Glow, and I use the leftover red on my palette for the other buttons. Lastly, the light attached to the power pack, I make sure it has a good white base coat, and then I go over this with Casadora Yellow Shade. Since my marine is part of the Ultramarines chapter, I will paint the chapter pauldron with McCrag Blue. Now I just need to paint up the base to match the rest of my army, apply the chapter decal, add a few minor touch-ups to fix my mistakes, and then the apothecary is ready for the final reveal. There you have it. A straightforward approach to painting white armor and that doesn't involve 50 thin coats of white scar, or resorting to using an airbrush. I'm particularly fond of this approach as it gives you some variation in shading to work with, which gives the armor a more realistic and natural look instead of painting it pure white everywhere. If you like this video, click the like button and let me know what you think of this approach for white armor in the comment section below. If you want to see more wargaming videos like this one, click on the subscribe button and check out all that this channel has to offer, from painting tutorials, battle reports, terrain crafting, and so much more. 
Lastly, if you want to see more painting content, I generally stream here on YouTube every Monday evening starting at 7pm Central Standard Time. So grab a brush and hang out with me as I'm always painting something new. And if you made it to the end of this video, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.